on this new journey of creating reading diaries well I want this new journey because there's a couple in the works so I don't know in what order this one will go up in but I am doing a reading journal or reading not a reading journal a reading diary oh my gosh strap um for the Throne of Glass series. I decided to do that because I wanted to kind of document my experience reading this series because I feel like it's going to be a heck of a journey and I have waited so long. The series is finished. Everybody has read it. I have not. So I thought that I would kind of document my experience. So the first one, and I'm buddy reading this by the way. So I, um, started with or I'm going to start with or have started with the Assassin's Blade and I am buddy reading this with Meg. I'll link her Instagram down below in the description box. So like I said we started off with the Assassin's Blade which is the book of five novellas that focus on the character of Selena Sardarthian um, prior to the events that happened in Throne of Glass. So I have read Throne of Glass. I just have not read the Assassin's Blade and I am actually finding it pretty interesting so I've only read the first story and I've kind of held off from reading this because I wanted to make sure that I was vlogging at least after every story like I may not be able to vlog during every like every part that I read but I do want to kind of give my thoughts on each story so there's five stories in this the first story is the assassin and the pirate lord I will warn you guys that these reading vlogs or reading diaries are going to be filled with spoilers so if you haven't read the series don't watch this because I really want to discuss stuff fully in in totality like I don't want to shy away from stuff trying to keep it spoiler free I may do spoiler free reviews later separate but I really want to delve into how I feel about the text in um in these in in these video clips and these vlogs so it's gonna end up being one a month because we're reading one book a month I think the bigger the book the more in-depth <laughs> the reading vlogs will be so I this one may not be as in-depth as I wanted to so after that three minute introduction let's kind of talk about the first novella which is the assassin and the pirate lord so the one thing that I did not like about the assassin's blade and this is probably because of the fact that I am reading this prior to reading um throne of glass there's not really much context for who selena is um and granted this was published i think after throne of glass so i don't know if i would necessarily recommend people starting you can start it's not a spoiler um but i don't know if i would recommend people starting with the novellas as opposed to starting with throne of glass because there isn't really much character context in this one meaning that i think that um mass writes in a way in which she assumes that you already know some stuff about selena um is it selena or selena i say selena so somebody correct me on that um I think she writes in a way that you should already have some context of who Selena is and I do have a little bit because I've read Throne of Glass but I think had I not read Throne of Glass first you know a while ago I think it would have thrown me a little bit but one thing about Selena that I did notice in this first story is that she is very cocky she's arrogant I think she she teeters that line of being cocky arrogant and confident and I admire her confidence sometimes she crosses that line and I'm like all right you know you're getting a little bit above your own bridges but I think we get to see this in this light because I feel like in Throne of Glass she kind of gets knocked down from that pedestal um, especially when she ends up in the mines in the first one but in this pirate lord we kind of see that her um her confidence is soaring she starts off by being upset because the guy who is the the leader of the assassins 
Arobin. Um, he seemed shady to me, y'all. Even from the get-go, like, even in the first couple of pages, it just, he seemed like he was not who Selena wanted him to be. And I, don't, I think she's kind of blinded by her relationship to him because, I mean, like, he's practically raised her type of thing. And it's kind of like having, like, a toxic parent. Like, you love them, you've been raised by them, but it takes you a little bit longer probably than the person on the outside to notice that they're toxic and not good for you. I think it's kind of that parent-child dynamic that they have going on. But you can see that she's kind of like his right-hand man, right-hand woman. Um, and she's very confident in her ability as an assassin. And I really do enjoy that. I already sensed the tension between her and Sam, even though they were like quarreling, quote unquote. There's a lot of tension, I would say, sexual and romantic tension between the two of them. That's subtle in the beginning but of course by the time we get to towards the middle and end of the pirate lord you can see it building i um loved that she was very set on freeing the slaves from the pirate lord first of all i loved that she was super cocky with him and then i loved it when he found out that she was only 16 and it was like you got your ass kicked by a 16 year old girl like <laughs> that part to me was hilarious but I loved her confidence and then the fact that she really really wanted to do the right thing by freeing the slaves even if she knew that it was just a trade that was always going to continue and that it was something that she inevitably couldn't stop but if she could help these, you know, 100, 200 people in this one instance, she would. Do I think that her decision was rash? Yes. Do I think that that could have gone incredibly wrong and that she put herself and especially Sam at risk in almost a selfish, self-righteous way? Yeah, I do. I, I commend her for wanting to make a difference but at the same time I also feel like she didn't realize how much she was putting them at risk and what type of danger she was putting them in and that she was hoping that her plan and her plan didn't even go perfectly like the way that she thought it would there was a couple of hiccups and she caused herself to get injured she caused Sam to get injured and I don't think she thought about like what would be the consequences with Erebin like she just kind of went with her gut and that's cool and all but I feel like that's gonna come back full circle and kind of bite her in the butt because even the pirate lord was like if I don't kill you he's gonna kill you because you're messing with that man's coin like you can't mess with that man's coin and expect him not to be pissed off I would be pissed too if somebody messed with my money not that I would I condone anything of that nature but you know but I think that is the lack of maturity I think she's confident but I think her confidence gets a little out of hand because she's only 16 and she's not an adult and she doesn't know the way of the world yet so she feels like you know she has the world in the palm of her hand and she can make whatever decision she wants without necessarily thinking of the consequences so I'm going to be interested in seeing how that plays out of course the pirate lord situation ended I wouldn't say perfectly but she was able to get him to sign documents saying that he wouldn't engage in the slave trade that she Arab and wouldn't get his slaves and you know it was it was pretty pretty nicely wrapped up so I'm going to continue on and now the next story is the assassin and the healer so I will probably take a little bit of time and read that one and then once I read that one I'll check back in for um just a regular oh I don't want to say a regular checkup <laughs> I'll check I'll check back in just to kind of share my thoughts and how I feel about this next story.
talk a little bit more about um, what I've read so far in the Assassin's Blade. So I really enjoyed um, the Assassin and the Healer. I really like the relationship that Selena ended up having with, and I'm flipping through now. Sorry if you hear Real Housewives of New Jersey in the background. It's crazy. Why can't I? Yurene? I really like the relationship they have. I think that that really showed how much heart that Selena does have as a character. Um, and then the assessment in the desert was just, was crazy. Like, so I kind of, I, cause I, I'm annotating my copy. As you can see, hold on, let me hold it up. So I'm annotating my copy. And I could tell that Ansel, I had made a note before it was real that Ansel was like the one who betrayed her. But I think that that story was not only supposed to be like a shocker in terms of like what happens, but also that it kind of shows why um, why Selena is actually distrustful of people. Like, she'd never had a female friend before, before she met Ansel. So she meets Ansel, and they hit it off, and they become these friends. And then she betrays her, and it's like, you can tell, like, it broke Selena's heart. And, you know, I think the first time I read Third Glass, I was kind of like, why is she such a um but she's not I think a lot of it and this is just like character study like she's been through some really crappy things and it's made her into this person that maybe she doesn't necessarily want to be but she is that person because of the fact that people have done such horrible things to her and it really sucks so I really really enjoyed I'm, I'm just really enjoying the book overall like I'm very surprised I know people like throw a lot at Sarah J Mass because she's not a diverse writer. She's not. Um, you're not gonna find many characters of color. You're not gonna find queer characters. Like, it's pretty whitewashed. If we're just keeping it 100, but um, she's a good writer. I will give her that. Like, I don't have as much time to read physical stuff as I always say because of the baby, but she she can write i think that she can write so i'm gonna continue i'm on the assassin in the underworld so i'm gonna continue reading that this is after everything has happened with selena in um after she betrayed arabin in the first story and she gets sent to the desert as punishment well talk about like her getting sent to the desert as punishment like he beat the shit out of her and i feel like we're talking a little bit about abuse in here but um not super super deeply and I can understand why but I like that in certain parts like it emphasizes like you know even in the section where she says um that was Arabin's way of expressing his hurt she does say like that's not an excuse and it's true like even if he was hurt by her betrayal like you don't do that that's it doesn't make it right um, and I always say, like, stuff like that is not justification, but an explanation as to why something has happened. So, I'm going to continue to read um, The Assassin in the Underworld on, on page 243. I will do a check-in um, before I finish, or maybe after I finish the story. Alright, y'all, so I'm doing another check-in. I just finished the fourth novella in this one which was the assassin in the underworld and while i enjoyed it i did find it a bit predictable i didn't understand how selena did not see so much of that stuff coming like as soon as i started reading and i'm glad that i'm annotating it because like you can see my thoughts are correct like in the beginning of the story before the big reveals i did not understand how she didn't think that arabin would do some twisted crap like it was clear that there was no way, even with him physically, like, abusing her, like, him saying, like, oh, I'm sorry, I have this mission for you. I was like, nah, I said, this has got to be a setup because there's no way that he would actually even do anything that would remotely be beneficial to her after she robbed him of so much money. Like, he clearly is, he's money hungry. He's an asshole. I don't know why she didn't see that. 
and I could tell like the way that the text was written that the guy that she was supposed to kill was actually the one that was trying to save the slaves so it really aggravated me that she just didn't get it and I'm like you but then I kind of like always have to remember like she's only 17 so she's not she doesn't have years of wisdom on her so a lot of the decisions that she makes I think are rash um and they're quickly made because she is young you know like and she's not necessarily thinking a hundred percent the way that she should it doesn't mean I dislike her as a character I just was like come on so when I, I kept rooting for her to see it before things went wrong and she couldn't see it um, I love the tension between her and Sam. I do not feel like it's insta love. I actually like the romance because it's like she's super focused. But in a lot of parts of the book, like it definitely shows that she cares about him deeply. Um, and that she feels for him in a way that she didn't expect. And I love that she still was able to kind of let herself go with Sam. Even after, um, even after Anselin, like betrayed her so badly in um the assassin in the desert like that really really I, I was rooting for them because she needed to be able to trust someone she needed to be able to love someone she needed to be able to care for someone um and I'm glad that it's Sam especially after everything that has happened especially after the way that Arabin has treated her like she needed genuine love and respect from someone and I'm glad she's getting that from Sam um, I love that we learned that she's like musically inclined and gifted in that uh, bits of the shows that she may have a hard exterior but she's a softy um, and I think she still has a lot to learn because she is so young but I think that uh, a lot of this definitely is showing her character as it would appear in Throne of Glass so I'm glad that Meg chose to read this one first because I think it puts selena's character into perspective and i think a lot of people are, are, are harsh judges of selena i think she deals with a lot i i think she's you know she may not be the best character in the world but you know, i think she is the way she is because of her experiences and this definitely gives great insight to her experiences so like i said i have about so maybe i didn't say i think i said that in my other vlog i have like 75 pages of this left um so I may just go ahead and finish it and I probably won't film my reaction to the end of it today. I may wait until tomorrow and then hopefully I can compile this up and get this vlog out the first full week of February. I'm hoping I can do that. We'll see what happens but I'm hoping that's a thing that does happen because I was supposed to finish this by January 31st. I haven't done it yet but I need to finish this one so I can go ahead and pick up Throne of Glass because that's the next one that we'll be reading and that's the next vlog that I will be doing so this is great I'm really enjoying it this is definitely sitting at like a solid four stars right now um this last story will either bump it up to a four and a half or drop it down to a three and a half I don't see it being a five star read hey y'all so this is the last and final check-in for this reading vlog of Throne of Glass so I have finished it as you can see I tabbed it like crazy um I really enjoyed it so I really can't even remember <laughs> where my last update was and where I kind of talked about what I enjoyed I think I did like my last update of like the assassin and the healer I don't think I talked about the last three novellas which were um the assassin in the desert the assassin in the underworld and the assassin in the empire and i think what i really so let me start i don't know if i should go through each novella because then this is this last clip's gonna end up being really really long but um i think i really enjoyed um the assassin in the desert and the assassin in the empire more than the assassin in the underworld because it was just there was a lot that went on with the assassin in the underworld and um it was kind of i think like her trying to trying to 
get back acclimated into the realm of the assassins so i didn't i wasn't really like feeling that one as much but with the assassin and the empire that one freaking broke my heart that definitely hurt my feelings but i definitely enjoyed it so the assassin and um <laughs> flipping back to the page the assassin in the desert really was um good because you see this different side of selena that i think you maybe don't necessarily have access to in throne of glass where she is having um certain personality traits that i think a lot of people don't like like she comes off as cocky arrogant kind of cold but you can kind of see why <laughs> I think I I know that this was published after Throne of Glass but part of me feels like and um Meg is the one who suggested this that we read this first before we read Throne of Glass I feel like it definitely was important for us to read this one first because I think it makes it'll make me appreciate Selena more in Throne of Glass than I would had I not read her in this one like I just feel like she got her heart broken so many times y'all like when she was dealing with the assassin in the desert she is sent there for training and you know she's building this relationship with this girl and you know it's her first female relationship and to have someone betray you like like hardcore betray you and it's your first female relationship like that would like really really hurt my feelings I don't know about y'all but that would that would truly truly hurt my feelings and I wouldn't look at friendship the same way like I've had some really crappy friendships myself and I it has changed me it has made me into the person that I am today I think uh, this book is a true testament to understanding that your life experiences can definitely dictate like how you become in the future or who you become in the future and I know that that really, really hurt her. I know that that really, really broke her heart. And I really, really felt for her to have made a female friend and then just be completely just betrayed. And she was so in love with the fact that she had finally found female companionship in a world that was definitely dominated by men. Uh, to have such a friendship and then have it destroyed makes you into a very complicated individual. And to be so young and to experience something like that and um i think what and it's so crazy because i remember and that's how i know that i didn't really care for the assassin in the underworld as much not that i didn't like it i just didn't care for it as much because i don't remember the specific details i do know that that's where like her and sam do establish that there is an attraction um, between the two of them as she makes her come back she finds out what happens when she's gone especially when she realizes how much she cares about Sam um, and how Arlen like had treated um, Sam as a result of what they did when they met with the pirate lord and I will say that I I think I enjoyed the build-up I felt like it was like oh you know like I knew there was an attraction from the beginning but actually seeing that come you know full circle made sense and then I can understand why she was kind of like hesitant in dealing with with dealing with Sam and his attraction to her I mean she just built this relationship with someone who completely betrayed her and then you know she has these feelings for Sam but she doesn't want to give in to them it's it was such an interesting situation now when I got to the last novella the assassin and the empire Oh my gosh, it broke my heart because I knew that Arabin was up to something. I couldn't tell exactly like what it was or what happened. Um, but I knew that when they were proposed with the fact that they, um, you know, they left, they moved out, um, and they needed this money and they, and they got this whole, uh, set up to rob these people um not rob these people but rob these people of their lives these two huge like crime lord people individuals when sam got that offer it it made me feel really really uneasy and i actually have an annotation like like saying like this doesn't feel right and then even with um 
with Arabin's interactions with Selena, like after he found out that they were going to commit to um, actually committing the, the the murders, he was very like, oh, I wouldn't do that if I was you. And it just made my skin crawl. And then when everything came full circle and I found out that he set it up, like, it's so ruthless and cruel. I just couldn't believe that he did all of this because he quote unquote was in love with her. But then because Sam loved her and he couldn't stand the fact that Sam loved her and actually cared about her and showed that he loved her, he had him killed. Like, I just don't... I... <sighs> that was very, very hard for me to read. Especially, I think, like, the last... One of the last lines in the book was... Um, Arabin's attention drifted back to the wagon, already a small dot in the rolling foothills above Rithfold because I don't like sharing my belongings. First of all, that proved that he looked at Selena as if she was property. And then on top of that, like you murdered the love of her life, or what potentially would have been the love of her life, because you don't like sharing your property. Like that really pissed me off, because I was like, you have to be one shithole of a person to to really feel as though, oh, out of jealousy, like, I'm going to not just kill the person like I would have had more respect for him if he would have just straight up one on one Sam like I'm throwing down with you because I care about her too. Well, he doesn't really care about her, but I have this infatuation with her as well. Um, I would have had more respect for him, but the fact that he set up this elaborate scheme like preying on their weaknesses like he is the definition i've never interacted with a villain like him he is the true definition of um of a villain and it is mind blowing how sadistic arabin is and it's just it was so hard to watch her go through that experience where she lost a friend and then she lost her love and when we get to Throne of Glass I think that definitely defines a lot of her character traits and I don't blame her for being like a complete ass and bitter and mean and, and just cold and conniving herself because at the end of the day like when you have lost so much and you've given so much it just it's oh, it's such a difficult it's such a difficult thing i think that this was definitely um well written it kept me reading i think when i went to go read the last two novellas i was like oh i'm only gonna read like 100 pages tonight and i finished the entire book because it was just that engaging and that amazing and i just loved it like i said before as you can see like i tabbed it up because i enjoyed it so much and I'm very surprised because I know that Sarah J Mass and I have a love-hate relationship because she's not a diverse writer, but it doesn't take away the fact that she is a gifted writer. She's a good writer. She she writes what she knows, which I can respect. So um I definitely enjoyed this. I will be doing another reading vlog for um throne of glass and the subsequent novels of this series so meg and i like i said are going to pick up one each month so i'm super excited for what that is going to bring up for the rest of the year if you've read these books um don't spoil please don't spoil the rest for me but if you want to talk about the assassin's blade in the comments below just let me know i hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you like it make sure you give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button all my links to my social media will be down in the description box below and as always i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i will be back with another reading diary slash reading vlog of throne of glass sometime soon